Hello Internet, this is Scott with Scott's Garage and today I'm privileged to, to be able to work on my daughter's 2006 Ford Fusion. This has been an excellent car over the years. It was our main driver as a family um, before my daughter started driving. Um, when she started driving in the later years in high school and then college, now this has become her, her daily driver. Uh, it's an SE uh, V6. It's been an excellent, excellent car all the way around. Now we live in, in Phoenix and, and the one drawback is that uh, the Phoenix heat just destroys rubber parts, especially in the suspension. I, I recently re replaced the, the rear uh, suspension. And, and today I am replacing uh, the control arms, both the lower and upper uh, for this Ford Fusion. The, the steering's been a little sloppy and I know that the, the ball joint in the one of the lower control arms uh, is bad. And I got an estimate that it was going to be uh, $200 parts and about uh, $350 labor uh, simply to replace one of the, the lower control arms. Um, so I'm a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, what I did is I went to 1A Auto and uh, found a six-piece set, front-end suspension set, for 147 So all six pieces, rather than just the two of them, for less price than uh, what the shop wanted to do. Uh, now, now with this kit, uh, it comes complete, um, again, for, for the control arms uh, anyway. And in, in, in looking at this, I've positioned these uh, left and right, uh, corresponding with the, the car, the left side being uh, driver's side, right side being passenger side. Here we have the front lower control arms. They are identical left and right. Next we have the rear lower control arms. Uh, they are different uh, part numbers left and right. Uh, the left side is a 31063 and it says L for left and then and the right side is a 31062 R for right. Now here we have the upper control arms. Uh, they are different uh, left to right. I'll get the numbers here in just a sec. Uh, for the left is an L for left SAR 10 and for the right uh, it's an R for right, SAQ51. So hopefully this will take care of the, the sloppy steering and it'll be a big, big project for today. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do uh, once I take the front tires off on both sides, it's a 19 millimeter, by the way, for taking the lugs off. Take the, uh, loosen those first, uh, then uh, raise the car up. I'll, um, Safety first, I'll uh, firmly uh, secure the car on some uh, very substantial uh, jack stands. I'm going to position these right underneath here, right on the frame. Um, and uh, basically it'll be uh, out of the way because we'll need to get to this entire front end and there are some uh, components down here we'll have to lower down and I just don't want any uh, jack stands in the way. So this will be very sufficient uh, on both sides. Okay, I want to give you a visual here. Um, so here's the, the upper control arm and uh, then the, the two lower control arms. Here's the, the one that's uh, rear facing and it comes in here and then the one that's forward facing. Um, the, the one that's rearward facing, uh, the bolt that's here, it's really close uh, to the, the frame, subframe. And so to get that bolt out, we'll, we'll, we're gonna need to remove um, the brackets for the, the subframe and then lower it so we can get the, the bolt out. I need to point out that the, the first generation Ford Fusion 2006 that is the exact same suspension as the Mazda 6. So if you are a Mazda 6 owner, um, this, uh, this video will apply to you as well. Okay, we're going to begin by replacing the upper control arm. And the first thing that I want you to notice is that the, the strut spring is exactly in line with the bolt on the left side. Um, I have found that the, the easiest way is simply to uh, loosen and actually uh, uh, loosen the, the strut all the way. So um, we'll be loosening it uh, down here um, where, the, where the strut uh, attaches. And then <clears throat> just go to the top end, the strut uh, cap and we'll be loosening these nuts as well and basically freeing up the strut so we can move it around and easily then get to those uh, bolts. 
Okay, to remove the lower part of the strut, it is a 15 millimeter, and uh, basically put it on the, the bolt end on the, on the front side of the vehicle. Okay, I removed the bolt on the lower part of the strut. Uh, now for the, the strut cap, and the size is a 13 millimeter. Okay, now that the, the strut has been loosened top and bottom, you can basically move this wherever you want. You can easily now uh, get to both uh, bolts on each side, and we'll use a, a wrench for this, and this is a, a 13 millimeter. Okay, now we're going to remove the, the nut uh, to the, the ball joint of the upper control arm. It's a 17 millimeter. Okay, here's the upper control arm removed. Uh, I did tap on the bottom here just with a four pound sled, just tapped it and it popped right up. Uh, you can see that this uh, the front ball joint is just shot. Um, that's why this has to be replaced. We'll put the new one then uh, in place. Um, the reverse way we took the other one out. Okay, at this point you want to hand tighten and just maybe just tighten a little bit more with the wrench, but don't fully tighten uh, either bolt. Uh, and same with the, the front as well. Okay, as you can see, the upper control arm is in place. Uh, the nuts are in place, just not, uh, not tight yet. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push the strut back up into the, the holes here, line it up and, and put the, the nuts on the, on the strut cap and it'll get, leave the lower detached because we have to remove the lower control arms. Next, we need to remove these, these two nuts from the bottom of the knuckle. Um, uh, I believe these are 22 millimeter. I don't have a 22 millimeter socket, uh, but what I found works is a 15 16th standard uh, is a very good fit. Um, so, so basically, um, these two nuts um, are for two ball joints, uh, one for the front lower control arm and one for the rear lower control arm. And so we will remove those and then I'll show you how to get these uh, ball joints off, which can be very tough. Okay, next, to get those ball joints loose, we are going to try one of two tools, or maybe both of them. Uh, both uh, were purchased at Harbor Freight. Both are reasonably priced. Uh, this is called the Universal Ball Joint re um, Removal Tool. Uh, so approximately $18 at Harbor Freight. You can always get that 20% off coupon. And then uh, this is another Harbor Freight. And basically, it's just a um, air hammer. It's a, a medium air hammer with, uh, with chisel. Very inexpensive, 13 bucks, and the fork, the pickle fork that you attach to it was about $9. Uh, we're going to try this first because you can pop with this and it's real easy. Otherwise, we'll use some persuasion. Uh, the, the, the nice thing about this air tool is that um, it, it really, it, once it gets going, it just con continues to suck itself in and uh, separate the ball. Okay, I want to show you the position of this, uh, the ball removing tool. So, um, Basically, the, the part that goes about around the ball is on top. It goes like this, and it just goes around the ball. And then you have the bottom part um, down here, bottom of the bolt. We'll, we'll tighten this. This particular tool is a 19 millimeter. Next, uh, take a jack and raise it up to the sub frame. Uh, it, it's just all connected back here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is take off these plates. There's one on each side. Uh, there are three nuts uh, per plate. Uh, the largest one is a 21 millimeter and then the other two are 15. And, and basically we're going we're to take this, the, the plates off on both sides. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a crowbar. Uh, the reason we're going to do this is that we have to get uh, these bolts out for the rear lower control arm. And to do that, the subframe has to come down a little bit. Um, you can take a crowbar, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to pry it down and pull that bolt out. The other thing that can be done is to go on the inside of the car and basically remove the steering knuckle. Uh, if you do that, um, the whole subframe will, will come down uh, uh, pretty far. Um, and, but uh, I have found that you, you can also use, again, a, a crowbar, but that's what I'm going to try next. Okay, you can see that I removed the subframe bracket on this side. I did uh, for the other side as well. Both need to, to come off. And I lowered the jack. Uh, you can see that everything is still in place. 
However, um, there's now flexibility. You can take a crowbar and stick it in there, and you can see that I can load the subframe enough uh, to pull that uh, bolt out. So I'm going to remove the bolt next. The bolt is a 15 millimeter. Okay, next you want to remove the bolt from the, the front uh, lower control arm. It's really tucked in there. It's a 15 millimeter, and what I'm going to do is use some really long extensions and uh, just get it back there and get a nice uh, straight shot and remove that bolt. Okay, we're on the home stretch here. Uh, what we want to do now is uh, preload uh, everything. And what I mean by that is we're going to uh, compress the, the strut uh, by, by lifting up on the jack, uh, basically getting the height uh, that the, the, the wheel is at uh, when the car is uh, standing by itself without uh, jack stands. This is very important. Uh, the, the rubber in the suspension has memory. And if we tighten everything down now, it's just the wrong height. It would just add excessive stress uh, to the rubber parts and they're not going to last as long. So uh, basically we're going to raise the, the jack up. Uh, we're looking for a distance of 15 and 7 8 inches from the top of the wheel well going straight down uh, to the center of the, the bearing there. So I'll, I'll raise it up. We'll get the measurement again of uh, 15 and 7 8 and then we'll start uh, torquing things down. Okay, we reached the, the right height of 15 and 7 eighths. I'm going to begin uh, torquing, thing, torquing things down. Um, I did use the jack. It's on, on one of the, the nuts uh, down here. Uh, the main uh, lower control arm. So I'll, I'll tighten the, the front one first and we're going to torque that to 148 uh, foot-pounds and the other bolts on here um, the torque setting is between 81 and 90 and again everything double check everything um, we'll get it torqued down. <laughs> Okay, I'm at Firestone now, getting this uh, project wrapped up. Uh, since I changed the suspension, uh, both the rear and now the front, uh, I got two new tires for the, the front. They, they were very worn. Um, and so, new tires in front and, and getting uh, all four tires uh, aligned uh, here at Firestone. And I'm thinking this uh, project is uh, just about wrapped up. All right, drove the car from uh, Firestone back home, picked up my son, dropped him off at work, and now I'm at uh, Starbucks. Car rides great. Uh, steering is nice and firm. The suspension, the ride, everything nice and firm. It drives like a brand new car. I'm so pleased with this project. I also asked Firestone what their price would be uh, for putting in the six control arms in the front end. Their price would have been $1,100, so uh, well worth it, paying $147. Hope you liked the video. If so, please hit like. Uh, please also consider subscribing to Scott's Garage. Thank you.